the cloud. Chances are most of your stuff is in it. But what if you don't want it to sit there? What if you want to be more self-reliant and you want to actually host this stuff yourself? Well, that's the journey that I've just started to embark on. It's the hobby of home labbing. In this video, I'm going to just take you through a basic overview of how I've got things set up in my home lab and what I intend to do with it going forward. So if you want to nerd out on infrastructure and home networking, then this is the video for you. So we recently moved and I'm happy to say that I've got my office in a separate building now. That's my little aircon system that's poking out of the door. I've got a separate line that comes in from the house. So this is the internet line that comes in from the house. It goes all the way out of the house, across the garden, into the back of this building. And so if we go into the building, you can see where my network starts. So here's my desk. This is where I've just been filming the start of this video. And to see where the network comes in, I'm just gonna raise this desk and then we can take a look at the connections. So that wire that was coming out of the house is coming into this bit here, uh, and that's where the network for the office comes in. And then we've got a wire going into my very basic home lab. So I don't have a fancy server rack. Um, I don't have many machines in this um, home lab, but it's getting there, it's a start. Uh, and the way I've got it set up is that the network is coming in uh, from the house and creating a separate office network in here. So I've not gone to the trouble yet of creating a, uh, putting a firewall in front of the house because frankly, I don't want to mess around with the, the internet connection for my family right now. I don't want to be responsible for making sure that that's all up and running properly, you know, because it's, it's just not worth it. I want to make sure that I've got a safe place that I can experiment uh, to start with. And then maybe in the future, I can put a firewall in front of the main connection in the house. But for now, we've got a firewall here which manages all the traffic coming into the office. And that is this CyberRoam firewall that I picked up refurbished uh, on eBay, actually, for quite a reasonable price. Uh, and the connection from the house that we've just seen down there is feeding directly into this. So we're treating the house as a WAN, a wide area network. So essentially it's saying that, you know, we get all of our traffic from the outside world from that location. It comes into this firewall, which runs any firewall rules that I've got set up, filters out any uh, nasty traffic. Uh, and then there's another cable that comes out of the firewall, which is for the local office LAN, so the local area network. And that's going into this socket here on my D-Link managed switch. So the benefit of having this managed switch here is that I can take the internet connection that comes in from the house, uh, and I can split it across lots of different sockets and I can create virtual networks, all that sort of stuff. So then anything that's wired in my office then sits on this D-Link switch. So we've got the internet connection coming in and then that's being passed out across these different cables. Uh, I've even got a couple of unmanaged uh, switches that are sitting here connected to it as well. So if I want to, I can start adding in devices that can uh, be on particular networks. Um, one of these is a PoE. Um, so that's actually feeding power to a guest network, so I can provide uh, guests with Wi-Fi, not that I have many guests coming over, um, but this little box here provides some basic Wi-Fi coverage for guests uh, over PoE. And I've also got uh, a bit more of a powerful uh, Wi-Fi connection over here. So we've got a TP-Link router that's providing Wi-Fi 6, so I can connect to this with all my sort of IoT devices in the office, my PlayStation, my TV, they can get Wi-Fi from this router which is acting as an access point. We've obviously got various other devices that sit on the LAN, so my main uh, computer uh, that I use from day to day, so I've got a... Good afternoon Nick, today is Monday July 22nd 2024 in Maidley. There we go, so um, the keyword for my Alexa is actually computer. So there you go. Um, so my main uh, desktop PC that I use day to day, it's my gaming rig. Uh, it's uh, just a medium end uh, machine. It's got a RTX 3070, 32 gigs of RAM, and i7 11th gen. So nothing massive, but it, you know, it runs Call of Duty in HD. It's the main thing. And then as for uh, the rest of my home lab, 
So on the top of the firewall, you can see there is a Dell Optiplex 7040. So this is a, a nifty little mini PC. Uh, it's actually running Proxmox. So this is something that I might do a video on. Uh, Proxmox is a really cool um, hypervisor solution that allows you to run containers, different virtual machines. Uh, so I've just set this up to run uh, an Ubuntu virtual machine. At the moment, it's just running uh, an instance of a project management software called Plane, uh, which I'm finding quite useful. I'm using that for my YouTube videos, um, some other projects that I'm working on. Uh, so it's nice to have a dedicated place for these VMs to sit. And I intend to put lots more stuff on there uh, as I expand the home lab. For file storage, I'm running uh, a Synology DS224 Plus. So this is a two drive NAS. I've got two uh, six terabyte drives at the moment. so. Uh, just enough for what I need and um, most of my content, uh, the archives for the YouTube videos, uh, any other content that I'm working on and other, other stuff that I need to store lives on this box and it's running in RAID 1, I believe it's 1, um, which is mirroring. So there's two drives in here, if I open this up, uh, and then one of those drives stores all the content and it's automatically mirrored onto the second one. So I've always got a second copy of the data if one of those drives fails. And then there's also automated backups that go uh, into Google Cloud and of course Microsoft Azure. So moving down, I have this rather chunky machine. This is my old gaming machine. Uh, so I'm using this also as a Proxmox server, but I'm using it for more of a test bench. Uh, so this is a you know, fairly bog standard machine. Again, 32 gig of RAM. It's got an old 1070 uh, graphics card in it, uh, but I'm not really using it for gaming anymore. Uh, I'm using it to try out different uh, Linux containers, different operating systems, like Linux distros, things like that. Uh, hopefully that can provide us with some more content for later on on the channel. Under the desk again, I've got next to the router a UPS unit. So uh, I recently had a few power cuts, which was unexpected. Um, but one of the things I really didn't want to have happen was uh, the hardware getting damaged because of that sudden loss of power. So I put most of the items from my home lab through this UPS. This is a, an APC. Uh, UPS from Schneider Electric. Uh, again, fairly basic. The model, it's a, it's a back UPS 850, uh, but it's got six sockets for uh, redundancy, so the battery will kick in if I lose power for those six uh, sockets. And then I've got two surge protectors as well, uh, and we just get an audio warning if uh, the power goes out. And um, it keeps all the servers running, gives me enough time to power down machines gracefully. So then over here under the office desk, I've tried to do as much cable management as I can. Uh, but I think uh, it's the best I'm going to get it at the moment. There's a little box here, it's a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, so this is currently running Home Assistant and uh, a couple of other little containers like um, Pi Hole. It's got um, Vault Warden on there, which is my password manager. I'm thinking of moving that over to uh, one of the Proxmox instances soon, uh, but this is a fantastic little box. It's so powerful for what it is um, And it's running a lot of my home lab when I first started I put most of my stuff on this using uh, uh, a distro called diet pie, which I might do a video on uh, at some point um, But it's quite a, a decent OS which is designed for small boards like this uh, And it, it's like I said, it's quite powerful for what it is Obviously last but not least my actual desktop setup um, this is where I record my videos and do my day-to-day -day work and the overall office. So I'm looking forward to getting some more home lab content in, uh, but for now this is where I'm up to. It's uh, simple, but it does the job and there's room to grow. So there you go, there's an introduction to my, my home lab, my home office setup uh, and the way that I've got my network configured. Uh, and it's the beginning of my journey, so I'm still learning a lot about uh, about running a home lab. Uh, and I've got lots of things to do, which means lots of videos to record. So if you're running a home lab, then get in touch. I want to know what you're running, what kind of containers you're using, what virtual machines you're rolling, what's your network look like. I want to see how people are running things in their own lab. Because I, I think that it, it's, um, it gives you an excuse to tinker with a lot of software and a lot of hardware. Uh, and it also definitely can be a money saver if you're reliant on a lot of these uh, cloud subscriptions um, you know things like Dashlane for example as a password manager you know that's a monthly subscription um, 
with what I'm running, it's free because I host it myself. The downside is that I have to maintain it. So it's all about you know managing the pros and cons. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.